We are just about one week away from the Doctrine and Devotion Southwest Conference that's going down in Burleson, Texas on March 21st at 10 a.m. There is still some spots available, and we would love to see you there. So if you are in the area of Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, we would love for you to join us for what we're calling Contending for the Gospel, Protecting Orthodoxy, and Promoting Unity. Head on over to DoctrineAndDevotion.com and go to our conference tab and find out all about this one-day micro-conference coming down March 21st. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Sure? Yeah. You know what is really good, though? What's that? I saw you. I saw what you did with your whip. I saw it. What did I do? You you got that thing washed and waxed. I did not. I took it to the cheapest wash. Yeah, and it, it was waxed. a rinse. Nope, not nope. Uh, no, uh, I'm seeing swirls. Nope, I'm there there, you there right are now. swirls. Mm-mm, nope, Though, didn't are, do those it. Scratches? Nope. I don't know what they are, but I just uh, I was I took my son out to drive because uh-huh. he got he's got his permit. Yeah, he's yeah. got to do his thing, and he's supposed to be like an he needs fifty hours, right? He's got to get yeah, fifty yeah, hours. Yeah. And I said, here's how you do it, son, because uh-huh. Jen won't let us f- fit f- fib fudge fid fub. Fidge, fudge. She won't let us um, oh, lie. And yeah, she say won't let us did. lie. Yeah. So, like, if I like, hey, we did forty five minutes. That counts as an hour, right? She's like, no, it counts as forty five minutes, oh. which is just ridiculous. Well, but whatever. She's also trying to protect, you know, your your child. Whatever. So, anyways, so I said, here's how we do it, son. Okay, so first we, we're gonna drive around. Mm-hmm. He's good at driving. We we'll drive around. Then we go through the long McDonald's drive through line. That'll eat up some time. That all That'll counts. eat up time. And then we'll go to the car wash on a sunny day, like we did when the line was super long and. Uh, yeah, he got his hour in that day. Probably drove like 10 minutes, but he got an hour of drive time in because so, he was in the so car I the like, whole time. Okay, here's mm-hmm. the thing. That's how we do it. All you yeah. do. <laughs> I don't get, get that you. drive I don't, time. I don't get you. Mm. What? It doesn't count. It don't, it, driving no, in the car. Here's the thing. Here's the it thing totally about counts. Joe. Joe is a rebel. I'm not a rebel. He, he has to go nope. against the grain. I don't have to go yes, against the grain. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, Mm-mm. you do. Nope. Absolutely. No, I'm following if the someone, rules. If someone else has joy in it, I like people having being happy. Yeah, I, that, have, I never take people's joy away. What are you talking oh, about? You are a joy killer. I am not. You doesn't make any sense. No, no. It you're does just make you're sense. just that, you're just mad because you're at fifteen percent. Like you're you're, har- you're you're hardly there. You're at fifteen percent. How am I at fifteen? percent Your computer is at fifteen. It's at twenty two. Oh, yeah, because you have my. You stole my plug. <laughs> Every time we sit down to do something, we record, and uh, Jimmy has to take my <laughs> cord. Because I'm like, why do you have a cord? Well, because I brought, you know, the 15 inch instead of the 13 inch. I, I didn't bring my brand new 13 inch laptop. I brought my brand new 15 inch laptop. So, but that one wasn't charged up enough. I'm like, all right, you can stop use it. Now you make thing. it sound. And then, no, I'm just messing. Gosh, <laughs> gosh. Yeah, so it, it, it's at 50 percent because you use it all the time. Uh huh. And so mm. you got here, and uh, you just know that I'll take care of you. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I seem to uh, forget it every every time. Yep. You see how what I here's what I do. I just have your back. You need the cord. What do I do? I give you the cord. Mm-hmm. I tell well, you that and, I take, and, and then you sit here and make fun of me. Only for because it. you came at me no, about how I'm no, teaching my son you know how to what? drive. No, here's the thing. You were going to do it on the front end. Nope. Because you said how you do it. Yeah. You were going to talk about the fifteen percent right away. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, you're assuming. Yeah, no, no, you're no, assuming. Oh, you're presuming. Don't don't you? You're presume, not deducing. Don't, don't presume upon me. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. No, I know you're wrong. I was going to ask how you're doing because you had uh, cinnamon sugar all up in your beard. Oh. You, oh, you just got it in my eye. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, my bad. My bad. So, um, so yeah, man, it's uh, it's Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, good day. And yeah. are you uh, going to Levita after this? No, I got way too much to do. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not either. Yeah. You, mm. No, no, I was. If you were going to go, yeah, I wish I could. And then, so now I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna go wash my car. Once I saw your car and it was clean and mine's not, yeah. I got to go wash it. Thanks, Elias, for getting my car washed. Yep, yesterday. good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, he, he had to drive it through. It was one of those old school, it's, it's very modern. It doesn't scratch your car or anything, but it's, it's, it's got brushes, oh, right? Yeah, I don't do those. And, um, but they, they'll wash the back by hand and then they go through the mm-hmm. But it's, it's, the, it's the kind where you have to get your left front tire into the track, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's old school style. And I'm like, Eli, you ready to do something a little more advanced? Where'd you guys go? Fuller's? No, no it's over by me. The one you asked about. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, 
I said, Eli, you ready to do something fancy? He's like, uh, what is it? And I go, no, you have to tell me if you're ready or not, and then I'll make you do it. And he's <laughs> like, okay, I am. I go, you're going to have to get the left front tire right into a little track that's just the same width as this tire. <laughs> so he got it in there, and he's, he's looking at the lady, nice. telling him, and he gets it in there, Good. boom, no problem. I go, put it in the neutral, puts it in the neutral, and then we're waiting, and the car starts like raising up in the back, and then boom, it drops, and then it I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. And then it raises up in the back. Like the guy's pulling up on the car. I don't know what's going on. And it drops. And she's pointing at the sign that says, take your foot off the brake. I'm like, I'm like Dad, take your foot off the brake. What are you doing? <laughs> Poor guy. And he's he like, didn't oh, know that. Know. No, he, I just, yeah. he didn't know. He, hey, listen, he did step one. Yeah. Well, And step two, he went to neutral. Yeah. Well, I, I might have just pushed it in neutral. So put it in neutral. So I might have helped. All right, he got step one. It's fine. No. He's getting A's and everything. He's getting A's and B's and everything. He's really? Oh, yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah, he is a good kid. Mm-hmm. So, Joe, I uh, I have a confession to make. Oh, do you? Yes. yes what, is, what is that? Um, I overslept mm-hmm. this morning. I might have noticed that. And did not attend Men's Fellowship. Yeah, I, I was here. I, I noticed that, yeah. Could, could, do you forgive me? Like, I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, um, yeah, listen, if you want forgiveness, you go to Jesus. Okay. 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 That's where you go. So for I, 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 I did go to him. Okay. Uh, he said, talk to Joe. Oh, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> I'm think sure. I'm pretty he sure said. he didn't say that. Oh, okay. He said, do three Hail Marys. All right. Well, what we talked about, uh, and Jimmy and I are, are going to talk here about confession and, uh, what it is and what it isn't and all of that, because I think a lot of us don't, I don't think most Christians think enough about confession. Yeah. You know, we think about forgiveness and we think about repentance, but confession is, though it's distinct from repentance, it's connected to repentance. You never yeah. get to repentance outside of confession. Yeah. And proper confession will always lead to real repentance. So what is confession and how does it work? You know, the, like one of the main scripture passages that comes to people's minds is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's a great verse. We'll probably mm-hmm. talk about that a few times. But Jimmy... Before we say what what confession is, maybe we should say what confession isn't first. Yeah, I mean, individuals like myself that had grown up uh, Roman Catholic, right? We have this, at least I have this, had to sort through this view of what confession is not, right? Like, because they have the cool boxes, they have like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. cupboards that you go into. Yes, and so the, you'd get, yeah the cupboard, the black cupboard, it got <laughs> yeah, like the, yeah. the, the the window inside, window and the, the yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. The so ve- like that, red the, velvet the, the, padding. Yes, it, I, when we're talking about confession, we're not talking about that sacramental right, mm-hmm. confession, um, talking to the priest, uh, having the priest uh, absolve you mm-hmm. and sending you out with 10 Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, it's, it's, and that's a, it's a powerful uh, picture. It's a powerful part yeah. of our culture, you know, in America. Yeah. Yeah. In particular, the Catholicism. So, you know, my school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a monastery there. Yeah. And there was. So some of us would uh, sneak in yeah. and they had this cupboard, right? Right. And it had wine or beer. Yeah. Uh, and you cigarettes. Just so you know, Killian, my nine-year-old listens, but go ahead. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they had uh, certain items mm-hmm. that we would procure. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, when they thought maybe they knew roughly who it was. Right. There was mandatory confession. Oh, they would ma- mandatory confession. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> Does that work? Well, uh, on the weak ones, I bet it worked. Yeah. So Franco, we knew Cabrera <laughs> was giving it up. <laughs> Cabrera was definitely going to be giving it up. Jeff Green and I were like, ah, 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 ah. Like, no, Franco, don't go in. He's like, I got to, I got to. Like, no, Franco, it's fine. Yeah. Look at you guys were causing all kinds of trouble. And then all of a sudden, we'd get called into the office. Like, I thought this was a. Con- private so yeah yeah mm, no very well, powerful tool against franco well confession Thanks, confession like that is not what we're talking about nor are we even talking about like listing your sins like some people think like i'm just going to list my sins out and that's confession mm-hmm. and then there's that like deeper sense where a lot of people view confession as a way of really afflicting yourself emotionally yeah. mentally spiritually like wallowing in your guilt and just beating yourself up and thinking, oh, i'm such a horrible right. person and that's not proper confession either jimmy we're like we talked about first john mm-hmm. um one nine what's what are some other passages Passages that we might go to that would give us a pretty clear picture of confession. Yeah, I think looking at Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord 
and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. That's great. That's, I mean, that, Psalm 32 is a really helpful um, picture of this because it, it, it shows a, a few things. Uh, one, to keep, one thing to keep in mind is that this, this idea of confessing means to agree or to say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right? So to confess is to agree with God about our sin, like what the scripture says about our sin, what we've done, what we are, who we are. So to confess our sins, we could say it like this, to confess our sins means to articulate our agreement with God over our sins with godly sorrow. I like that. I, I really like that. And so even it's, it's active, right? That, that mm-hmm. To articulate our agreement. So there's, it's not a passive just, hey, I did things. I know it in my head. I know, know it in my head. head. But to actually articulate it, uh, I'm trying to think of that phrase, right? What was that phrase like? Uh, say it, don't spray it. Say it don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking of phrases. I was thinking like, confess our confess precise sins precisely. I don't know. I can't remember the phrase. Oh, you yeah. Know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, I do, but I don't, I don't you have see, a quote. It's all yeah. jumbled as well. So, but yeah, I mean, you, I, I love the way you, you did that. Articulate our agreement with God over our sins and what's important here with godly sorrow, not that wallowing mm-hmm. in our guilt and beating ourselves down. And not not like a, a spiritual indifference to it either, right? It's yeah. like the, the two ends. Like We, we tend is, to end yeah. up in one or the other. Yeah, yeah. Now, the reason this is important is um, Confession. The reason confession is so important. Well, there's, there's a bunch of reasons. Um, one is because sin itself, even for the believer, sin can and does interrupt our communion with God. It, it cannot interrupt our justification. It mm-hmm. cannot pause our salvation. It, it, it cannot remove the peace that we have with God through Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. Justification is certain, but communion is... Is and we've talked about this on the podcast yeah. before. That's our experience of fellowship with God. Yeah, that can ebb and flow. Yep, it comes and goes, ebbs and flows, uh, bobs and weaves. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it does. Stings like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but justification is static, certain. Yeah, like it's steady; yep. it doesn't move. Yep. But your experience, your relational experience of of fellowship with God, does change over time, and so sin. Um, is an interruption in that. And like, essentially, um, you can think about it like this, like um, in, in Stephen Charnock wrote that classic, um, the existence and attributes of God. Mm-hmm. And it's a classic book. And then there's a famous section in that book where he talks about secret atheism, the secret atheism or practical atheism or Christian atheism. It's an atheism that Christians experience. And essentially like one way to boil it down would be to say that um, we function as or become atheists whenever we choose sin because in that moment it's not that we don't believe god exists Mm. but we don't believe god we don't believe him Mm. we don't believe that he is worthy of obedience that worthy of our praise Uh, we do not believe he is worthy of being first Mm. and we believe that we should exalt someone else or ourselves in particular above god and so in that moment we become atheists we ignore god We, we dismiss god and so sin is an interruption of our practical allegiance to God. It, that's the, 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 the communion that can be interrupted. Didn't MacArthur talk about judicial forgiveness versus parental forgiveness? Is it parental? I thought it was prenatal. Oh, I got so confused <laughs> when uh, he was talking about that. Yeah, he did. And it, like, I'm not honestly, like I've never come across that in the reform tradition. He may, I think what I, I, I did see him say this and, or, or read him mm-hmm. say that. And it looks like he was saying, like, our justification is our judicial forgiveness. That doesn't change. But we can still – God relates to us as father, and we can still displease him. And so he – that forgiveness is a kind of forgiveness that uh, is a bit more conditional or something like that. But I I just don't – I don't like that particular articulation. I could be wrong in that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, he's totally right that our sin does displease God, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and we we see that in Scripture, right? Like God being displeased with individuals, grieves because, the Holy Spirit, grieves the Holy Spirit, and uh, and yeah. So confession is important because of that. The point one it interrupts our communion, mm-hmm. and so it's important because that displeases God. Yeah, we we so there's a sense in which God, you know, so okay, he 
he hates sin, mm-hmm. right? We know he hates sin, but what does he delight in? Well, he, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Like, so faith, yeah. like that's where yeah. the repentance and confession all comes in because now we're operating out of faith again and he is pleased. He is pleased because Christ is at work in us in those moments. Um, we could also say, and I think that one of the ones that's probably more commonly talked about is that confession is important because sin uh, will harden our hearts if it's yeah. left unchecked. And confession is the check of our sin. It's the constant checking of our corruptions. But that passage in Hebrews, man, right? That Hebrews mm. three twelve through 13. Yeah. Uh, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God, but exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Woo. Man, uh, I love that passage because it it shakes me up a little bit mm. because the author of Hebrews, not Paul, uh, is saying, hey, be careful, brothers, be careful, church, yeah, yeah. be careful, members of my faith community, uh, be careful because it's possible for you to wind up in a place where your heart is evil, unbelieving, leading you to fall away. Like, if you aren't careful... Conditions can be right for you to fall into a really bad spiritual experience of rebellion. And so the, 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 the antidote to that is exhorting one another every day as long as it is called today so that your heart isn't hardened. So the danger here is our hearts can be hardened. Mm-hmm. Exhortation is needed. And confession comes into play here because, A, confession is a means by which our hearts are softened, but also confession allows other people, if we're confessing publicly, for them to know what's going on so that they can then further exhort us and encourage us in ways that are needed. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's also confession. Like, it uh, it will – it's important because, like, our confession will hurt ourselves or hurt other people. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that's, Joe, it's a practical issue. It's a practical issue, and it's one that I deal with with Joe all the time, his sin – uh, hurts me when, oh. when you treat yeah, you me have a little you, you have a little boo boo. Yeah. See, see, you're sinning against me mm-hmm. now. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take care of you because no. you're you're my child. What, what, you got a boo boo? Uh, Let me kiss it, make it better. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I mean, you see that right? Like you see how when uh, has sin ever really hurt somebody, Jimmy? I mean, come oh, on, we're getting know. all dramatic. Getting all dramatic. I don't know. Uh, David uh, killing Summers. What? No. Oh, David, our member? Or just, no. Oh. oh, David in the Bible. <laughs> in the Bible. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, did you say David killing Goliath? No, I didn't say David killing Goliath. I oh. was going to say uh, like, Uriah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I, I, look, um, this I don't is, think I said Goliath. You know, but I'm in my head. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> listening to you in my head. Oh, is that, yeah. wait, okay, oh, you're yeah. listening to something else. Oh, yeah, now. I'm listening. Okay. I've got music going. So, I mean, even going along, are you really? No, Do you no, really? No, no. Like, for a moment, I actually believed you. I was like, no. he's listening to music, isn't no, he? No, I wouldn't do that. Hey, listen, like, think about it like this. There are, any sin mm-hmm. has the potential to blow up our lives. Doesn't matter what the sin is, right? Yes. So, yep. it's like, it's not like people like, hey, I wound up and I, like, murder. Like, okay, murder could ruin your life, right? But mm. nobody jumps you straight to so? murder. <laughs> it depends. Um, murder could ruin your life or uh, an, an affair, Right, could blow yeah. up your marriage, yep. could blow up your life. Um, but, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, yep. whatever. But it, you, you don't start there. The sin no. starts earlier and smaller. Yeah. Right. And so, like, sin. The, the practical need for confession is that sin unchecked doesn't just harden your heart. It can ultimately really hurt you and other people. So it's not the highest motivation, but it is a motivation for us to consider. Mm-hmm. Like the small things that you like don't deal with tend to grow, mature, grow roots, bear fruit, and all that. Yeah. So then when we talk about confession, uh, it's really important because it does four things. First, uh, confession readies us for repentance. Right. And as Joe mentioned before at the at the beginning, uh, we focus on forgiveness. We focus on repentance, but we forget the importance of confession that Mm. leads towards uh, leads us to repentance. Right. Yeah. How can you know what you're supposed to repent of if you aren't confessing and articulating your sins very specifically? How can you, as Joe said, at at, for the defining it, right? Uh, Confess our sins means to articulate our agreement with God over our sins with godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you're not confessing it, then yeah. How are you articulating your agreement? Right. So it it readies us for repentance. It prepares. It's not the same thing, mm-hmm. but it leads to it if it's done right. Um, and there's no getting to repentance without it. Yeah. It also, and I, I mentioned this earlier, but it, it softens our conscience. You know, your conscience gets hardened after a time. Because like you commit a sin, you're like, oh man, I, I'm going to use one. <clears throat> 
uh, like, let's just say like, oh, hey, I, I said something mean to somebody that like mm-hmm. actually hurt their feelings. And then you feel terrible afterwards. Like, oh my gosh, I feel so terrible. But you don't confess that sin. You don't deal with it. You don't repent. And then the next time you do it, it hurts, but maybe it doesn't hurt quite as bad. It doesn't yeah. feel as bad. And after a while, uh, you just stop caring. You don't care at all. You just yeah. keep doing it. And this is true with every sin. And then you define yourself as scorpion. Well, whoever, I mean, first of all, whoever, don't, don't, mm. don't arrogantly mm. sniff at me, dude. Hmm. Taking my moves, I'm taking all my moves. <laughs> um, I'm just being honest about it. Anyway, <laughs> yep, I'm, just, yep. I'm just keeping oh, yeah, it real, yeah. Jimmy. So you know, I, I like it. But, someone, someone's conscience isn't softened yet, huh? No, my my conscience is. Uh, it's all right. I think it's I think it's, it's, it's right it's, where it should you know, be. It's it's middle aged. You know, it's a little. You know, <laughs> it's got some arthritis. Um, so I think yeah, I think it can. It, it, it tends to soften our conscience yeah. because we are with godly sorrow addressing our. Our fallenness and and looking back to God. Number three, confession, uh, yeah, leads us back to God, right? Yeah, because like you're you're looking, yeah, you're not you're not just looking at your sin. That's right, because you're looking at Him. You're literally confessing yeah. to God. Yeah, and you're and you're looking, you're longing mm-hmm. for that uh, that that relationship. You're longing mm-hmm. for that communion that has been interrupted, right? Right, and so it's it's instinctively just pushing us back to him. And that's, I think that's really good because, you know, people think like, I'm going to, I'm going to confess my sins and like, but what if I just sin again? Like, yeah. is God tired of forgiving me? Yeah. Does God get tired I, it's, of, it's of the same sin, same yeah. prayers over and over and over again. But that's, that's why it's important to, like, like you said, you're looking back to God when you confess your sins, mm-hmm. because that's what then forth, confession does these four things. It restores the joy of salvation, yeah. right? So Psalm 32, again, verses 10 and 11, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but the steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Here's the thing. The upright in heart and the righteous are not sinless people. They are sinners who confess their sins and repent of their sins and to the Lord in response to the sins in their life. That's what qualifies them. They're a people of faith, and that is what gives them this joy. Mm. In other words, they are able to, you know, consider 1 John 1 9 as as like a, a, an integral part of their faith. If I confess my sins, that's that's who we are, right? He is faithful and just. That's the character of God. And he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we look at this at our sins and look to God, we're doing so with this anticipation that we can find true spiritual delight and freedom Mm. as we do it. Now, Joe, finding this spiritual delight and freedom, Mm -hmm. right? It's, it can be hard for people to find that. There's not a lot of, you you can only find it in God. You can only find it in God. But there are means. There are means. Means of grace. Means of grace. And, uh, you know, we got prayer and, and scripture. Corporate worship. We got fellowship. Lord's supper. Um, yeah, the ordinances, and, and then the Jofo. There, you know, um, be- we we are a means of grace, and uh, we've got a conference coming up, our twenty twenty conference. That man, people are signing up. People are already registering really fast. It's all on Covenant Theology. Subtitle is God's Promises for God's People. This is our fourth one, Jimmy. Our fourth, fourth annual one. conference right here in Chicago. And you know what? We're bringing in Sam the Man Renahan. You know what I like about Sam the Man Renahan? His not, name, not just his theology and his name. I like the fact that he likes heavy metal. Oh, yeah. Oh. So we got some theme music for when he comes out. What? Hazers, no, lasers. We're not doing it's that. not church, man. We're, we can do not, that. We can no, do hazers and lasers. Not, not it's not church. It. And yes, we can, but yeah, we're not we can, going, we're to. going to do it. We're not going to mm, do this it. This is the budget. It's not in the budget. It's in the budget. How is it in the budget? I put it in there when you weren't looking. All right, Joe. So it's, uh, why don't you go ahead and give us the details? What's the dates? Friday, September 18th, and Saturday, September 19th in St. Charles, Illinois. Uh, you can uh, go over to doctrineanddevotion.com. There's a big banner right there for the 2020 conference. Go there, hit that button. You can register. You can get all the information. It's going to be a good time. We are excited to see a bunch of our friends come back and to mm-hmm. meet new listeners and people that haven't been able to come to the conference before. So we will, uh, we'll see you there. So, Joe, uh, we've been talking about confession. Who do we confess? Well, like you already said, we're not going to confess to a priest yeah. unless you're talking about Jesus as our high priest. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. confess to God. And that's what First John 1, 9 is really you know, telling us. Like you confess your sins to God and he yes. will forgive you. So that's, that's kind of a, a, an obvious one. We confess yeah. to the Lord. But there is a sense in which we're – or at least two ways in which we should be 
confessing to other people, right? Yeah, I mean, you think of uh, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working, mm. right? So it is important that we're confessing our sins to each other for uh, to be encouraged, mm-hmm. right? To be held accountable, yeah. right? To be helped. Uh, so in our time of need, they're able to... Uh, uh, encourage us or mm-hmm. to to lend a hand yeah, exhort yep uh it, like sometimes we just need like especially as guys sometimes we need a kick in the pants yeah. like you are being stupid you're being we, sometimes, a baby. Yeah. sometimes we need them to come alongside us and just like uh hold us right it's like hey man i love you and god loves you and just need just to suffer well or look to him and so why is it you always tell me i'm stupid and, and i'm being a dummy but you won't hold me oh i'll, I'll hold you accountable <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why Greg and I are friends. Mm-hmm, really? Yeah. Yeah, because he's a holder. He's a holder. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. What? No, well, you know. You know. He's. He's. he's, he's a, you know. I, I feel I, so good I, about I this conversation like, I have right no, now. I have no yeah. way out of this. Nope. I, I back myself into a corner. Mm-hmm. My only. I can. I have to come at you like a badger now. All right. So um, we confess to God. We confess to others. You said for help, and of mm-hmm. course, obviously, we confess to others when we sin against them. Yes. You got to go to them and yep. say, hey, "This I did this. This was wrong." Um, I had to apologize to Jimmy last week mm-hmm. for being a big jerk face. Yeah. And, um, you know, because he's what? super what? sensitive. What? Oh, oh, my gosh. He's it. like a snail out of his shell. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, so, Joe, since, let's get since to he it, had man. to do it, let's get know, to it. why don't you go ahead and uh, how, how, how do we... How do we confess? How do we confess our How sins? How do we confess? All right. So let me say, let, let's say it this way. Um, you have to identify your sin to confess it. You have to articulate your mm-hmm. sin and you have to repent of your sin. Ooh. So um, to identify your sin, and honestly, I think this is the hardest this part. This is the hardest part, yeah. Right? Because um, it takes time. It, it, gen- generally, it's going to take time. You're going to know a couple of sins in your life, but you oftentimes don't know the sins beneath the sins, yeah. like the roots that are down there. Um, it takes time to figure that out. There are many sins in our lives that we're never going to figure out, uh, or at least you, you can't figure out all of your sins at the same time because our sins are too myriad. But um, we there's just some that we're not, not as aware of. And so to identify our sins essentially means we have to appeal to God's word to help us to understand well, to underco- to uncover and understand yeah. our sins, right? Because absolutely, if, if I if I'm just listening to TV preachers and uh, and my and, you know like religious people, they're going to have a bunch of different opinions about what sin is. Mm-hmm. So we go to the scripture. So you're saying, by what standard do we stop it? What stop it? What I know what you're doing right no, now. No, I'm not doing anything. Yes, you are. No, what you're trying to poke. The Jojo Bear, right now. We're trying to, you said you were going to go badger, and you're going badger by provoking me. All right, so I'm not. You know, I'm not taking the bait. No, I'm just saying. So it, it, the standard of right, God's word, yes, yes. So yes, I just want to make sure that's very important. Mm-hmm, yeah, because you see, your history has shown you disagree sometimes uh, with by that by what standard oh, with a, with uh, a documentary, not with the. What are you talking okay, about? Stop, hey, okay. listen, people, are, people are confused right now, and they're, no, they're know, annoyed. But, but because I'm just you're seeing it. I don't know why focus on the cinnamon sugar in your beard. Is it still there? Yes, it's still there. Why don't you tell me? All right, so for example, Jimmy, we might go to the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Right? It'd be a good place to go. You go to the Ten Commandments because in each of the commandments, whether they are a positive or a negative command, positive meaning, um, you know, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, mm-hmm. negative being do not bear false witness. So whether they're positive or negative, the re- the the implication of the the reverse is true. So if if it's a negative command, don't bear false witness. The positive is then true that you must stand up for those who are wrongly maligned. Mm-hmm. And speak the truth. So you look at the Ten Commandments, right? Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, yep. all that stuff. And, uh, and by the way, pastors. No, oh, here we go. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to do it. No, I'm it's going to bother it. you. No, I'm fine. I've said it enough. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So um, you you spend time meditating. Like yeah. consider the Ten Commandments um, and, and then ask, like look at your heart. Like Jesus does this for us to a large degree, right? Yeah. Um, like when you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. I'm telling you, man, even when you lust in your heart, you are committing adultery in your heart. And so like you need to deal with that. that just because you're not committing adultery with your body, which is a more heinous sin than doing it in your heart, both are still sinful. Yeah. So the Ten Commandments is a place to go, but what are some other passages that we can look at, Jimmy, that would help us to uncover and identify our own sins and struggles? Yeah, I mean, think of 1 Corinthians 6, mm-hmm. uh, 9 through 11. It says, uh, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And it's like, there's, it's a lot here. Do not be deceived. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither the, the sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, men who practice homosexuality, thieves, greedy, drunkards, revilers, swindlers, uh, and these will not inherit 
the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were mm-hmm. justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Man, so the, you got a good list there. Good list there to to start off. And it, it, it's it's I like these lists because you know it'll go from like the sexually immoral adulterers, men who practice homosexuality, but right in the middle of those is idolatry. And mm-hmm. idolatry is connected to that, right? Because what you, I mean, think about it. This, this sex is one of those. Well, it's one of the greatest earthly feelings that you can get, right? It's the most. It's one of the greatest God-given natural highs that a person can experience, right? Is, is sexual expression. Now, it's designed to be experienced in the context of marriage between a man and a woman, mm-hmm. uh, and not outside of that in any way. And so, when we are diving into these various kinds of sexual immorality, we are exalting ourselves and our own pleasure above God. But then it gets into like, you know, the thieves and the greedy and the drunkards. And if you start to apply these to your life, you realize like, okay, so a thief, am I a thief? Well, I'm not robbing banks, but you got to ask yourself, do you take from others what isn't yours to take? Uh, You know, and and people will justify it. Well, like, well, they're not going to miss it. Or you know what? I deserve it because I'm not getting compensated in this other area. So I'm going to take it from this person. or I'm going to mm-hmm, take it from, mm-hmm. uh, take this, this thing that I think will like, make me make it up to me in some way or drunkards. Right? People just think, well, I don't get drunk, so I'm good. Mm-hmm. But it's about intemperance in general, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of these verses. Um, what about Galatians five, uh, 19 through 21, where it says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. So again, like these lists are not exhaustive, Mm -hmm. but if you take them seriously and begin to apply them to your life, you should be able to say like, oh, well, you know what? Um, There are sins that I'm struggling with here, and I can see some of these are kind of digging down deeper. Jealousy? I mean, a lot of people struggle with jealousy. They don't even know it. Like they just think they just think that's unfair that that person has that and I don't. They don't recognize yeah, it as jealousy. Yeah. What about Ephesians five? Uh, but sexual morality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. Let mm-hmm. there be no filthiness. <gasps> mm-hmm. What? Go ahead. <laughs> or nor foolish talk. Oh, mm-hmm. Nor crude joking. Mm-hmm. Which are out of place. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just wondering. But instead, let there be thanksgiving, Joe. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to feel convicted. No, I'm waiting for you to have joy and be thankful. I am joy and be thankful because okay. because I'm not, I'm not what, Joe, crude you, talking like you, you. No, you may be sure of this: that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Right. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Actually, we need to do a whole episode on the language stuff. That'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, right. we really need. So again, Jimmy, there's there, there's a bunch of things being articulated here. So like, so here, like, there's an emphasis here on like sins of of the mouth, right? Like yeah. things that we would say. Yeah. Yep. In, in other parts of these things, we're looking at uh, heart sins, sins that you commit with your body, right? So like, you can you can commit sins with your body, violence or sexual immorality, or um, you could hate in your mind and lust in your heart. Or you could use your words in damaging ways. Mm-hmm. So, like you can see, like there, are, we should start thinking and uh, about these issues, not to beat ourselves yeah. up. The point here is not we don't identify these sins to beat ourselves up. We identify these sins so that it can lead to freedom from these sins, from conduct, from the condemning thoughts, from the from the controlling impulses uh, to to walk in God's ways. But after identification mm-hmm. of these sins comes articulation. Yeah. Yeah, so Joe, uh, you talked about it uh, at the beginning there. Uh, you're agreeing with God that this is a sin, right? That I that you have sinned, uh, you have fallen short, uh, and that you need to be restored, or that you need forgiveness mm-hmm. for that sin, right? And, it, and agreeing with God it means admitting your guilt, mm-hmm. right? So like you're just taking ownership. You just stop making excuses. You're not confessing your sin if you're yeah, making excuses. That's right. Hey man, I, I like I did this, but you know I was you really know. tired. Yeah, I was really tired, and that person was really annoying. So mm. you know, I, well, you want me? And God, you gave me a middle finger. So I mean, I don't. I, <laughs> and I they, don't, they cut me off. You know, and so I had to use it once in a while. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like we will make up excuses. We will actually justify our sins, yeah. and um, that you. So to articulate your 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 sins means you, like you said, Jimmy, agree with God in admitting your guilt to Him or to others. And one of the ways that this can be helpful is by writing it out. Like we love that. I I, I love writing it out. Um, 
one, it helps me just kind of slow down and mm-hmm. to actually think about these things, identify these things, and then kind of seeing it. Because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes- There's least, an impact there by it, seeing it. Yeah, there's an impact there because often like I'll think about it mm-hmm. and then I move on. Yep. But that makes me, that forces me- That's really to good. To keep seeing it. It's a really good point, man. And it's like, I know that, but I didn't know it, know it until you just said it. Like seeing it on the page yeah. has an impact. Because yeah. yeah, that's really, that's really, really good. Um, okay, yeah. before you get too sniffy over there, let me just say that while writing is helpful, prayer- is the most important thing to articulate okay, it yeah, that's in good. prayer is more important, but yeah, we would encourage you guys write it down and then mm-hmm. lock, lock up your little pink diary. So nobody can peek in there unless you want them to, yeah. cause that could be embarrassing. But, um, so yeah, yeah we, we agree with God, mm-hmm. admit your guilt, Yep. anticipate his grace. Look at that alliteration. Mm. That's Baptist alliteration mm. right there. That's Baptist. right. Baptist. Yeah. We anticipate grace. We don't confess our sins wondering if God is going to forgive. We have the assurance that he forgives us. We're in Christ. We believe this, yeah. this yep. gospel. We're frustrated with our, with our um, failures. And so we look to him. He, he cleanses us and, and gives us the grace to walk in his ways. And when we fail, we can confess again and yeah. repent again. And that's really the third thing, right, that, that we talk about, that, that confession ultimately is incomplete until it leads to actual repentance, right? Yeah. And so the old... We like the James Boyce. Uh, that's the yeah, Baptist, boys. not that Boyce. Um, not not that. So James Pettigrew Boyce, uh, founder of Southern Seminary, um, he has a catechism for boys and girls, and in that catechism, he defines repentance like this: Repentance is sorrow for sin accompanied by a determination, with the help of God, to sin no more. So it's basically two things, right? It's sorrow for sin, but it's not just sorrow. You can't just be sorry about your sin. It's yeah. sorrow for sin yeah. and a determination to sin no more. So it's not it's not a perfect execution of no more sinning. It's mm. the it's the heart determination. It's the trajectory. I don't want to sin anymore. I'm going to pursue righteousness yep. in this particular area. But that's done only with the help of God. With the help of God to sin no more. We know that we can't do it on our own. So that's what repentance is. It is a a, a godly sorrow producing a new direction. And this is important because um, repentance will always be imperfect in this life, and it will be oftentimes short-lived. It doesn't mean that the repentance isn't real. Mm. It just means it's incomplete. It just means that it's not perfect. So the person who is you know, struggling with a particular sin and they're, um, they're grieved in that sin and uh, let's say they're, um, I, I remember a guy one time used this illustration. He's like, there's a guy that goes to the strip club. Like he's a single guy or married guy, whatever. He's a single guy, goes to the strip club and he's just, he's just filled with lust and he doesn't control himself. He goes to the strip club and he's throwing dollars at the stage. And then all of a sudden, he's a Christian though, right? He's mm. doing something like wrong and the Lord convicts him and and, and he, he's, he's broken over. He's like, oh my gosh, he runs out of there and he runs home and he, he reads the word and he articulates, he, he agrees, he confesses and he repents. Like it, it's all happening, right? But the next week he goes back. Was his repentance real? It, it, like he goes back and, and it, while he's there, he, he, he is convicted and he repents and he runs out. Well, I'm going to say that that repentance is real. It's, it, it's, it may not be perfect. It may be somewhat short lived, but he needs to continue in that repentance. That's where the short circuiting is happening. He's not repenting if he sits there and doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Now he's not repenting. He's not even confessing. He's just kind of just sitting there. But if he moves, if there is a change. And so this repentance is an important aspect of this because confession is supposed to lead us there and that repentance is to be continued. And you only will continue in that um, working of repentance if you're maintaining confession because it keeps your conscience sensitive and it keeps you reliant on God for grace. All this to say, confession is probably, uh, we could probably do with having a little more confession between brothers and sisters, well, between, especially between brothers and sisters between sisters um, in those smaller gatherings. Mm-hmm. But we all desperately need it to be a more regular part of our personal walk with the Lord because uh, confession connects you to Christ. Because your confession, your confessing of your sin only makes sense in light of your confession of Jesus as Lord. So that's what we're that's what we're what we're pushing for here. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Diva or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, drvotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, joefostore.com, and grab some gear. Fresh pod every Monday and Thursday, blog post on Wednesdays. Later.